Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So in today's video, I am starting a new channel all about fragrance. So this is something I've been super obsessed with lately. It started sometime after Christmas, which was so odd because I could have asked for so many fragrances for Christmas. Um, but thankfully I got some other things that I wanted, you know, thankfully I got anything. But yeah, this obsession started shortly after that and it just spiraled out of control. Like I started with three fragrances and now I have almost 30. It's crazy. I did not know you had to blind buy a lot when starting a fragrance collection, just cause a lot of the fragrances that you're interested in are discontinued or they're just only available online. And with just COVID and everything, some places are not allowing you to test or sample as freely as once before. So it's been fun. I honestly love blind buying. It gives me a thrill. It's like getting a gift in the mail. You don't know if you're going to like it. You don't know if you're going to love it. And if you don't like it, you can always gift it to somebody or try selling it online. So I've just been having a ton of fun on Fragrantica, Mercari. It's just been a lot. So I have a haul for you guys of some fragrances that I've picked up recently. Starting off, we have Good Girl Supreme by Carolina Herrera. So I never liked Good Girl, the original, but I don't know. Lately, I smelled it at Ulta and I really, really liked it. I was very surprised, but I still stand behind the fact that this flanker is just superior. Like, it's much more simpler. It's not spicy at all. I know Good Girl has some spicy elements. It's more um, complex than this one. This one just has... Tuberose, tonka bean, some berries, but when they say berries, it's not like obvious, like Burberry Her or like a super fruity Bath and Body Works fragrance. Like it's not like that at all. It's just very nicely kind of in the background to add that fruity element. But they just say forest berries, like they don't even really specify. So we don't know if it's blackberries, blueberries, and jasmine, of course. And so I love jasmine. I'm pretty sure everyone loves jasmine. I think, and orange blossom, but those happen to be my favorite florals. This is just creamy but sexy. I love a creamy fragrance and this definitely has that element to it. If you want a mature nighttime fragrance but you don't want anything too spicy or too musky, I really recommend this because it's not too sweet so it's not going to be childish either. You know, Good Girl is very popular but there's also a lot of people who don't like it because it's just a lot or it just doesn't sit right with them. I feel like you cannot go wrong with Supreme, but I don't know. Everyone has a different nose, which is something I also find so interesting about fragrance. Next is one that I was so excited to get, and I was so sure I would like it, but I guess I overlooked a major note in this fragrance. So this is Olympia by Paco Rabanne. Okay, so when I first smelled it, you know, straight off the cap or the sprayer, I was like, this is going to be great. This is going to be nice. How could it go wrong? It smells really nice from the sprayer. I, I It's just salty floral vanilla right something about this i don't know if it's on my skin or what but i don't think it's necessarily my skin because i got it on my sweatshirt and actually i wore the sweatshirt really quickly like the next day to do something and it was just again the nauseating ginger salt note in here it's like moscow mule vibes and i love moscow mules but you guys like people don't talk about the ginger flower note enough and I know it's ginger flower, so I was kind of trying to determine if, you know, just like orange blossom, for example, is it kind of like that where it's, it does not kind of smell like an orange, but okay, so ginger flower is its own flower. I think this is what it looks like. But then when you go on for Grantica, it is showing ginger as well as some flowers, but it's saying it's a spicy, fizzy top note with a pronounced fresh citrus faucet and piney nuance. So basically describing exactly what a ginger smells like and you know I know it says ginger flower but maybe they really did mean gingery you know how they just say things to make it sound fancier because I smell ginger in here and if you guys have ever taken a ginger shot or you know used ginger beer it has a very distinct sour smell that's not pleasant at all really and so it is blended really well in here like it is um, the water jasmine, the mandarin are all in the top as well. So I do smell that really nice mandarin now and, you know, the jasmine, but it's the ginger for me. Like, it's the ginger for me. Basically, if I didn't say already, I'm not feeling this at all. It's not my vibe. Like, it is sexy. It is nice, but it's just not for me. Like, it doesn't smell that good on my skin and it actually makes me sick. Like, it actually gives me a headache. 
and I'm not a dramatic person when it comes to fragrances, but that is just absolutely, I can't. I will say though, I'm so intrigued by the salty vanilla concept because salt is not that common in fragrance, at least I think. Oh, I've looked at so many fragrances, like hundreds of fragrances of fragrance by now. I'm not an expert, but like I rarely see salt. So I did order Olympia Intense and I'm hoping that that one's fine because it's literally takes out the ginger flower, adds in the amber, and it's very simple. And I heard that it's really good. So we'll see. Okay, while we're talking about Paco Rabanne, we have Pure Excess. So I really wanted to go ahead and blind buy and just get the full size bottle of this, but it was a little expensive. I mean, not as expensive as niche. Like, I know y'all be buying, like, $200 perfumes, but it was just, like, $60, $70, and it wasn't on FragranceNet. It's been out on FragranceNet forever now, so I didn't really want to buy it on Amazon. You never know with Amazon and the reputability of those sellers. Even if it is Paco Rabanne, like, you'll always have people commenting being, like, this is inauthentic. Okay, so I hate to say it because now it seems like I don't like the house, even though this is only two fragrances, but this is just a little off and I'm not really sure what it is. Maybe it's something with Paco Rabanne, but this is also headache inducing. I remember the day I wore it, I, I kept smelling it because, you know, I was trying to test the fragrance, but not in a good way. Like I kept smelling it kind of like, uh, this is a little much. Anyway, so it has a lang, lang It has that popcorn note, which is exactly why I bought it. I was so intrigued. That's also another rare note. So I'm liking that with Paco Rabanne. It seems like they have this trend of doing out-of-the-box things, but also still making it wearable, even though I don't think the ginger is wearable to me. Um, but, you know, they added that freak note and then they balanced it out with florals. Let me look up the description. And I love the big bottle with the snake charm around it. Some people don't like it. I love it. What do you mean? Okay, it has coconut, peach, orange blossom, musk, sandalwood. Like you would think this would be my favorite scent because of the sandalwood and the vanilla and the coconut. I mean, why not? I think the Elaine Elaine is what bothers me. And by the way, I can detect the popcorn note if I'm really trying. Um, but I think a lot of people have compared it to a kettle corn type of fragrance, which is obviously going to happen when you have that vanilla in there and the coconut. Like, it's just automatically going to smell like a sweet popcorn. Um, but like others have said, it is kind of just there on the top and then it fades away. You know, when you're making a designer fragrance with a popcorn note, you are obviously catering to people who are spending $70 on a perfume. Those people probably don't want to smell like literal popcorn. So I think they took a unique concept, made it wearable. Um, but in that, it's not necessarily unique. I've seen people comment saying that it smells generic and, you know, they bought it for the popcorn note just for it to be kind of faint. And so I definitely see that. Anyway, that being said, I don't think I'll get the full size, which makes me sad because I would love to stay here and rave about it. Like, iconic popcorn fragrance, you know, love the bottle, but I just can't see myself making the decision to spend that extra money when it's not my favorite in the sample. Okay, you guys, I'm like taking forever to film this video, but let's move on to Private Show by Britney Spears. So this is obviously a celebrity fragrance. Love Britney, free Britney. I don't know why I bought the 3.4 ounce. I think I just thought I would love it. And I have some thoughts on this one. Okay, so the top notes are whipped cream, coffee, nectarine, clementine. I mean, I guess, I guess a little bit. You can tell there's something, I guess. And then the middle notes are dulce de leche, jasmine, sandbox, orange blossom, and the base notes of amber and musk. Okay. I guess I didn't read enough reviews before purchasing this. Actually, I watched a lot of video reviews, but not, I didn't read a lot of reviews. This has such weak sillage. It, it's just a weak perfume in general. Like, as soon as you spray it on, obviously you get the alcohol at first. But still, like, you know when you spray on any normal perfume, you can just immediately, like, wow, I have C by Giorgio Armani on, or whatever. This, it's like, like, I'm struggling to detect any notes. It's hard to imagine that all of those notes are in this. That being said, I have found a use for it. Um, since it is so faint, I do like to pair it with more of my intense, um maybe spicy fragrances or, you know, patchouli heavy fragrances. And this does balance it out a bit. Um, it's just, it's not even worth the $17 that it is. It's just su such a bad performer. So I think it's funny that the top note is whipped cream because you know how whipped cream doesn't really smell like anything. It's like basically like that. 
I don't understand the coffee note. That's a big thing for me. Like, I don't understand where people are saying that this smells like a frappuccino, a latte. Like, maybe I'm a Nosmic to coffee notes because even in black opium, I can not really smell the coffee. And I don't really smell the florals in this at all. This is just basic, sweet perfume. I'm actually very surprised because there are people who love designer niche fragrances that praise this fragrance. And I'm just wondering, am I a Nosmic to the coffee note? Like, is something going on? because to me it's just so disappointing like I thought that would be something that I could depend on like I'm blind buying this it's gonna be great and then it's just funny because it wasn't okay so another pretty fragrance and this is Midnight Fantasy and I thought long and hard about buying this one now that I'm smelling it's at least more complex than Private Show did I even say it was called Private Show I feel like I'm sucking at this whole perfume thing but this I think I mainly bought for the cherry note okay now that I'm smelling it, it's actually kind of nice but on my skin um I got what a lot of people were saying about how it smells soapy it does smell soapy or shampooy not really like bar soap it smells straight up like shampoo in a good way it smells like a cherry raspberry plum kind of one of those um cheap two-in-one suave kids shampoos I thought I would love it you guys I thought I would love it because I love plum sour cherry raspberry those are the top notes um I really like freesia which is in the middle but there is also iris and orchid which I don't know much about iris I'm not super familiar I'm not super familiar with anything you guys I'm just now getting started with this hobby but I think iris is one of those florals that just sometimes doesn't work for me so you guys yeah it's just not for me and I wish I didn't buy it. Okay, so while we're on the hate Britney train, um, well, I don't know if I should say this one. Okay, I'll just mention it really quickly, briefly. This is Sunset Fantasy. I got the sample because I just wasn't sure. Like, I just thought all of Britney's fragrances could be a safe blind buy because how could she go wrong? You know, they're marketed to the general public, I think. Um, but she did go wrong with Midnight Fantasy and Private Show. Oh my gosh, you guys. This kind of smells more expensive than it is. And it's funny because I feel like this has one of the most childish packagings. Just with the rain, the gradient. I don't know. This is actually really interesting. You know, I'll venture off and say it's kind of what I wish Pure Excess would be. They're kind of similar. So this has mandarin, grapefruit, apple, peach, raspberry, orange blossom. It has milk mousse, vanilla, amber. Yeah, so they both have peach, Pure Excess, and Sunset Fantasy. I'm not saying they're dupes. I just... Kind of got the vibe that they have that in common. I just like this. It's fruity and sweet, but it has that musk to it. Okay, it has sandalwood in the base, but I guess that orange blossom is really coming through. It's not just fruity plain. That was such a terrible explanation, but I meant to say that I did order a full-size bottle. Um, it's not the big size. I think it's a small size, so that's coming because I would just really, really like the sample. So... That's great. And while we're on the topic of samples, I have this Daisy Love Oh So Sweet that somebody on Mercari gave me. Oh my god, I'm kind of running low on it, you guys. I'll waste it for you guys. Okay, so I really liked this from the moment I sprayed it, but now it's coming across a little soapy, but not in the Midnight Fantasy way, just kind of, or maybe powdery. Okay, so we have raspberry, blackberry, bergamot in the opening, which I definitely get those vibes. And then you have Daisy and Jasmine in the middle notes. And then you have Mr. Iris in the base notes. Yeah, I think the Daisy and the Iris, just because it's adding so many more florals, is making it a bit powdery. But it's not too powdery. Not at all. I definitely feel like I could use this. Like, I would totally wear it out. I just, maybe I'll hesitate on checking out a bottle because, I don't know. I think I could get a similar vibe with Burberry Herb, but just without the powdery notes. Yeah. Okay, I changed my mind about that one. Okay, so now we're moving on to my favorites. I have Dolce & Gabbana's Dolce Garden. And this, I smelled in Ulta a lot before I actually bit the bullet. And I didn't love it in Ulta. I never actually put it on my skin. I never got a sample. Um, I just smelled it a few times and I decided to go and buy it because it actually wasn't a lot. Like, I don't know what's with Dolce & Gabbana, but especially on Fragrance Net, like, I was able to get this under $40. This is so good. I love coconut. Um, 
just in general, I don't mind a sunscreen coconut. I don't mind a beachy coconut, but personally, this is my favorite type of coconut where it's creamy. It smells just like coconut cream. But anyway, it does have magnolia, mandarin, and neroli in the top notes, and I feel like that citrus helps balance it out, as well as other florals like frangipani and ylang ylang. I'm not sure how I feel about ylang ylang. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about a lot of notes. Like, I don't know if I like neroli all the time. I just know that I like the way all these florals combine. And then it has vanilla absolute, almond milk, and sandalwood in the bottom. Just like all these notes are perfection. This is a great fragrance. You know, it's winter where I'm at, obviously. Well, not obviously, you know, there's different hemispheres. But I wore it the other day. It just made me happy. I could see somebody wearing this to like their spring wedding. I don't know. It's just undeniably feminine, sweet. But it's not overpoweringly sweet. You know, you just have coconut and vanilla and mandarin orange like those aren't really super sweet but it just is perfectly balanced and blended i'm just actually obsessed with this i know it's popular um so y'all probably already have it or have checked it out <sighs> let's move on girl to dior's poison girl so dior is a house that i do have a lot of interest in i'm not really into the miss dior line but i really love hypnotic poison so i really don't wanted to try this and this is actually the Eau de Parfum. Parfum. You guys, like, I can't do that French stuff. I can't do the Russian pronunciations. I just don't have the throat for it. Like, I want to try. I don't want to be ignorant. I'm just saying. But anyway, the Eau de Toilette is much more accessible. You can easily get that on Ulta in stores or online. But the Eau de Parfum, like, I had to hunt it down. I got it from someone on Mercari. Like, a brighter, sweeter version of Hypnotic Poison. It still has that almond note, which almond is one of my favorites. Um, but it has less of a Play-Doh vibe. Still love the Play-Doh vibe, but this has more citruses in the opening to balance that out. Damask Rose, Grass Rose, and Orange Blossom in the middle, and then in that base note has Tonka Bean. I think Tonka Bean is really what the Tonka Bean and the Almond I'm just obsessed with. And I normally don't love rose. It has to be blended well, and there's so many different types of roses. As we stated, there's those unique roses. It just depends, but this does not come across powdery at all to me. I feel like most people would like this. I don't see a lot of people talking about Poison Girl because I feel like, first of all, the fragrance community on YouTube, I feel, is quite small. And then, you know, there's just fragrances that get hyped up and those are usually what are talked about. And I feel like Poison Girl is not talked about a lot. Like, I've seen it in a couple of videos, but, like, this one just doesn't get hype. Probably because it was discontinued or something because it is not available on most sites and you do have to get it from resellers and stuff like that so maybe that's the reason as well as new releases and stuff like that get more of the hype so okay so last i have love by sofia vergara and i heard that this was a do for black opium and that's not necessarily why i got it because i have black opium um i did want to see if it would compare you know if they were dupes <sighs> You guys, I'm obsessed. It does, okay, you know what? That's actually funny. It does remind me of Poison Girl. It really does. So this has top notes of passion fruit, first of all. I don't quite know what passion fruit smells like, but I used to drink this Welch's passion fruit juice. It was like a cult favorite in my household. We were the cult, I guess. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't say it's not tropical or anything, so don't get it twisted, but Orange blossom in the opening, green apple and mandarin orange. The green apple is not obvious at all, really. Middle notes of coffee. Again, I might be a, a nosmic to coffee. Coffee blossom as well. Orchid, magnolia. I'm starting to think I really like magnolia. Oris, which is a powdery, earthy root scent with woody violet flower nuances. Yeah, I don't like violet, but you know, when they add a powdery note, I feel like I don't mind it. But if the fragrance overall is powdery, I just can't. And then it has base notes of praline, vanilla, amberwood, and musk. This is stunning. This, I, I love it. It's nothing like black opium. Black opium is deeper. Well, this is deep. You could definitely wear this to a date night dinner. This smells expensive in my opinion. I love it. Like, I was not expecting to love this as much, but I was wearing it the other day. and I was continuously smelling myself and not in the pure excess way, but in a way like, oh my God gosh like I'm actually obsessed with it so yeah it does remind me of poison girl it's funny because you know they don't even share an almond note but they both have citrus in the opening and they're both sweet and they're both 
just well balanced between all the components. So again, it's not like black opium because black opium has patchouli, it has pink pepper in the opening, it has pear. They're just completely different fragrances. But if you want a similar vibe for cheaper, def like this is one of the best celebrity fragrances I've ever smelled. This is probably my current favorite celebrity fragrance that I own because actually a lot of the celebrity fragrances I've tried, I'm not obsessed with. And I'm not a big Sophia fan. Like, I don't say that to sound like a hater or anything, but I never watch Modern Family. Like, I don't really follow her. I just think she's absolutely gorgeous and I love that she's Colombian and just, we stand. But we don't, because I don't know much about her. Like, I would have never bought that if I didn't hear the hype about it. Um, and I definitely think it's worth the hype. You guys need to check it out. So, obsessed. But you guys, that is all for my haul. I have tons of more fragrances coming in the mail. It's taking a little while because there's some things happening down in my part of town. But yeah, as soon as those come in, I will be filming first impressions videos and then following up with an update once I've sampled them or tried them out for a couple of weeks or just a week like I did with these fragrances. And yeah, I forgot to mention, I am getting rid of Olympia. I have it up for sale in Mercari as well as Midnight Fantasy. I just, I can't, you guys. Midnight Fantasy, I tried out twice. Olympia was kind of a one-time thing. And it sucks because I smell it and I, like I see the vision, but it's just not for me. So I did order Olympia Intense. So we will see. I'm praying that it works. Please subscribe for more fragrance videos and I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye.